Hi everyone, Alex here. Today's cavalry tutorial is all about cameras. Okay, so today primarily my goal is just to go through and show you how to use cameras, how to make one, how to set them up, how to set a shape up so that it is 2.5D and just a few of the shortcuts and tips and tricks that you can do with cameras. So first things first is you need to make a camera. You can do this multiple ways. You can either alt or options click on the camera icon in the toolbar here. That will make a camera in the scene window. There's also a button in the shelf at the top right of the screen or if you want you can go to the quick add menu via control command and full stop and just search for a camera that way. Now with a camera in your scene window you can click on it and you can load its attributes and you can edit position, look at. None of this means anything until you've got something in the viewport but there is an option in the grid menu where you can show a 3D grid which will look flat initially but I've created this quick axis thing so that now when I go onto the camera we can have a look and see what we're looking at. The viewport camera tools will only work when the camera tool is selected but if you've got this tool help button at the top left on you'll be able to see at the bottom left of the viewport what the buttons do. So you've got alt which will track the camera left and right or you can control to orbit and spin the camera about. It's still going to be super useful for editing and getting around quickly and knowing what you're looking at. But the best thing to show you is just what happens when we start throwing shapes into the scene. So simply put, I'm going to throw an ellipse in and we've alt clicked to create an ellipse which has made it at the centre of the scene. And as we spin the camera around now you can see that we've got a 2.5D ellipse. It's important to say that when you create a shape whilst there is a camera in the scene, the shape will automatically be 2.5D. That's this little cube button in the scene window on the shape itself. Or if you go onto the ellipse shape, you can go to the advanced tab and there's also a 2.5D checkbox there. The other important thing to note that when you enable 2.5D on a shape, the position and rotation attributes go from double twos to double threes, or sorry, just a single for the rotation to now having an X, Y, and Z. So just quickly there, if you look at position rotation and I disable 2.5D enable disable enable and yeah you can see we've got these extra attributes appearing in the attribute editor now most of us are gonna know what X and Y does on position but we might not understand what Z is doing so if you were to just quickly increase Z up to 200 or 300 and back to 300 you can see now with the grid that that's basically pushing it backwards and forwards towards and away from the camera now then when a camera is created it creates a layer in the scene window so that you can access all of its attributes and so that you can keyframe and animate position look at etc and the rest this is important because you can actually create a second camera so if i create alt click on the camera again it's now overtaking the angle and depending on which cameras at the top of the hierarchy it's depending on which angle you're going to see in the viewport. So if I move camera 2 to about frame 25 and we scrub the timeline past that, we're jumping between the two angles. So if I select this camera and I do this now with that, uh, just orbit it a little bit, we've got two different camera angles. Great. But say you've got one camera and you want to edit from one shape to another, that is also possible. So if I create a second shape and I say position him to about minus 900 on the X position and we'll go way back to about minus 1000 on the Z so if I just disable live mode a minute and I load the camera into the attribute editor there's a button here called fit to view and this will open up a little window and it's got a button there and a margin attribute this button is going to fit any selected shape into the center of the viewport so if I select the ellipse now and then press fit to view it's centered that ellipse where it gets cool though, if I select the camera again and then just press K to add keyframes to all of these positions and then move to a position further down the timeline, I can then select the rectangle shape and press fit to view again and we've automatically added keyframes to the camera already. So when we scrub across here, we're zooming from one shape to the other. Let me just hide the Z axis. Uh, so we can press play and it's moving from one to the other without us having to do anything. 
So this will get really interesting if, say, let me just delete these keyframes. I'm going to delete the rectangle as well. I'm going to create a text shape just so we can see a little bit more. I'm going to rotate the text 90 degrees, zoom it out way back, and we'll put it over where that rectangle was pretty much. But if I go on the camera now and select the text shape fit to view, we're also rotating as well, so we're, we're saving a ton of time just by pressing one button to do that action. The grid's still on, that's what you see in there, that odd sort of oddity. This is absolute time saver, especially if you're doing things like lyric videos and you just want the camera to pan from one line of text to the other. Great setup. Okay, so you've probably noticed there's another button on the camera here called Distribute and Scale. I'm going to go into a new composition to explain this one, I think. Think. So I'm going to make four random shapes and we'll position them anywhere in the viewport and then we'll create a camera and make all of these shapes 2.5D. So with the camera selected, if we select all four of these shapes, distribute and scale, there's nearest layer, furthest layer, selection order, distance from center. Let's just push the button and see what happens. Doesn't look like anything has happened yet. However, if you get the camera tool and you then orbit the camera, you'll see what it's done. It's distributed them along the Z axis based on the nearest layer distance and the selection order, etc. You can have a play around with that just to see what that does, but that's quite useful for a quick setup if you just want to scatter an array of shapes to different Z depths, but without altering the appearance of the shapes when there's no transforms on the camera. So if we just change that back to zero, the shapes look like they were when you made them until you've turned the camera around. So I guess I'd best show you some practical uses for this. And to do that, we'll go into another scene very quickly. So this scene is just a very simple cell animation and it's a wolf rising up out of the ground. Easy as, nothing much to it. But let's say that I want to now add a bit of depth to it and add some stuff in the background and the foreground just to make it look like there's more going on. So to start, I'm gonna create a white rectangle. I'm gonna set the width to something huge, like 5,000. This might not be necessary, but I'm doing it. I'm gonna make the stroke on this rectangle black and I'm gonna increase the edge divisions on the width to about 50. I'm now going to add an oscillator to the rectangle. I'm going to check use normals on the oscillator and I'm going to go for minus 20 and plus 20 for the minimum and max. I'm going to parent the oscillator to the rectangle. Select the rectangle and then duplicate it using the duplicator button. We'll change the duplicator distribution to linear and we'll change the direction mode to vertical. And we'll just make that negative 200 size so that they're going from front to back bottom to top. Now I'm just going to increase the carrot a bit so we've got a few more. We'll, we'll go with five and we'll make that a little bit longer and we'll stagger the oscillator just to give it a bit of something different. Now I'm just going to parent the rectangle to the duplicator and with the duplicate selected control or command and D. So we've now got two of these duplicators but the original duplicator I'm going to place behind my wolf and the new one's going to go in front of the wolf in the hierarchy. We need to make a camera so let's just alt and click to create a camera and this is where you start to see some issues with the draw order because everything is at zero z depth and the hierarchy is ignored when everything's at zero z depth. That's why you're seeing the eyeball of the wolf come through in the scene here, but that's fine. All you need to do if you get these sort of issues is you just need to go through your layers and just make sure everything's got a slightly different z depth. So for the wolf eye, we'll just put the z a position of one, the detail we'll put at zero and the wolf will put at minus one. So if you want to see what each of those layers are, we've got an eye that just animates up out the ground, nothing special. We've got the detail, which is the fur and the front legs just comes up out the ground as well. And then the main body, it's really simple. It's probably the simplest thing you can do, but it's, it's cool. So with that out of the way, we also need to do the same for the two duplicators. So duplicator at the bottom, we were going to put behind. So we'll just scrub that back about a hundred and the duplicator above the wolf, we're gonna pull forwards about 100. 
and as we pull it forwards that eyes disappeared because this duplicator is no longer sitting at zero on the Z depth. We're going to lower the Y position of the front one just to above the wolf's paws and then the back one will lower the Y position to just above sort of the same area. So that when we press play it looks like the wolf's emerging out the middle of these two waves but at the moment it doesn't look like we're making that much use of the camera however if we select the camera and maybe pivot yeah we probably need to add a bit more depth to it so we'll, we'll sit about there for a second with the back one we'll pull that further back lower it and the front one will increase the Z position. Let's put the camera back to where it was. Oh, just have a cheeky lower. Yeah, I think we're starting to sort of see what we're after in a bit of Z depth and making that depth of field sort of actually have an impact on what we're doing. What will help is some really far background objects just to really define the depth of field. To do that we can add like a backdrop like stars and a moon or something so we'll create a, a moon put him to the back of the hierarchy let's place it about there it's 2.5d already and we'll go for what do we want to go on that we'll go really far back let's increase the heights just so we can see it at that distance and then increase the size of it now when we Turn the camera yeah you see the the movement and where it is behind the wolf which kind of adds to the depth quite a lot now to add upon this further we can create a super ellipse we'll add a, a random behavior to the radius and these are going to be like stars effectively and the random can be anywhere between i don't know two and ten and then with the super ellipse selected we'll duplicate it Oh, that didn't get added to the duplicator because it's 2.5D. Bug! Anyway, um, <laughs> drag the super ellipse onto the input shapes of the duplicator. On the duplicator, we'll change the distribution to random. We'll spread that width a good couple thousand, height quite a lot too, and slap the count up to about 280. That'll do. And we need to move this duplicator to the back of the hierarchy as well just so it's behind everything enable 2.5t and we'll set the position z on that duplicator all the way back as well increase the height so i can see where it is and now hopefully if we just press play and start panning the camera oh i can still see the edges of the uh, duplicator it's not wide enough not wide enough to see it that'll do uh, yeah, we're, we're getting a much better sense of like a depth of field. And that's a quick rundown. You, you can do this with anything. Like if you've got a bunch of shapes, try it with whatever you want. But the, the main concept, I think, of cameras and creating scenes this way is just to use the Z depth to create that 3D effect. Because it's not really 3D, it's 2.5D. So everything is still going to be flat. So with all of that in mind, let's move on to another bit. This video is getting quite long, I apologize. But I'd like to show you quickly how to make a 3D cube really quick. So I had previously written a script for this that would just automatically make it and it saved a hell of a lot of time. Uh, but not everyone's a script kitty and that's fine, neither am I. I'm gonna create six rectangles so this is where it can get a little bit confusing we've got six rectangles and these represent the six sides of a singular cube and we need to place these all so that when we rotate the camera they look like a cube so without wasting any time the rectangle shape i'm going to edit position z to 100 rectangle shape one I'm going to edit position Z to minus 100. Rectangle shape 2. I'm going to edit position Y to 100. And I'm going to edit position X on there to 90. And number 3. I'm going to edit position Y to minus 100. And I'm going to edit position X to minus 90. And then rectangle shape 4. I'm going to go position X at 100. And we're going to edit position Y to 90. And then rectangle shape 5. We're going to go for X minus 100 and uh, rotation y minus 90 and then when we create a camera now and we start panning 
We've got a cube, but you can't tell because it's all the same color. So let's just run each shape a different color from the palette. This shouldn't take too long. Da, 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 da. Ba -da -ba 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 -ba. Right, and then we spin it around. You've got a cube, which is awesome. It's so simple, it's so fun, but it's awesome. And the important part here is if you want to animate it, simply just grab all of these, group it, Control G, select the group, enable 2.5D on the group, and then we're gonna right click rotation, add behavior, we'll come down to noise, open the noise, we're gonna go for a minimum of 180 and a maximum of 180 oh, there's a minimum of minus 180 sorry and then when you press play we've now got a cube that spins on its own this is really awesome there's tons of really cool uses for it i've barely scratched the surface of what you can do with cameras this is just a couple of methods for using them if you wanted to get started. For example, I've been creating some weird scenes like I've got this Rubik's Cube that will bounce in. I just wanted to see how far I could push what it could do. And it was really fun. The Rubik's Cube fully animates. You can rotate it any direction, do what you want with it. It's awesome. I'd also made these uh, cubes that spin about. Oh, that's the pre-comp. They're pretty awesome. And there was the Black Friday tape I'd done for, for a cavalry advert a couple months ago, which was also pretty cool. But yeah, anyway, I absolutely recommend checking it out. I will try and do a part two on cameras where we go into some other, some other little things that you can do. Maybe try and make a lyric video where we get a camera to chase a null around the screen and do some weird different things with it. So anyway, I'm Alex. This has been an introduction to cameras in cavalry. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let me know if you have any requests for tutorials you want to see, and I will try and get them done as soon as possible. I will also try and get some of these scenes uploaded to Scenery because Scenery is such a great source of educational content for anyone learning cavalry. You can go over there and find all sorts of scenes that are pre-made by other cavalry users and it's a great way to dissect a scene and see what you're looking at and see what other people are using cavalry for. I'll drop a link below the video for that. But once again, thanks for watching and goodbye. I don't